Hello everyone, we have Nandita Ma'am here with us today. She's a graphic novelist and a pianist. She is trained in Western classical music from the London College of Music. She has written several graphic stories for different age groups and her short stories have even been published in various anthologies. Her novel, Rain Must Fall, won the Neve Book Award 2022. In this workshop, we will get to know how a graphic novel comes to life and the concepts of how a story is put together. Nandita Ma'am, we're very excited to have you here with us today. So let us begin. Well, thank you all for having me here. It's wonderful to see all of you, even though it's all on Zoom. I'm just happy to speak to all of you today. So how are you all doing? All good? Just raise your hands if it's all good. Yeah. And uh, what's going on? Are you all from, uh, you know, around Delhi or like which different parts of the country? If it's different parts, raise your hand. Then we can just have a conversation later. But okay, we have got some people from different. So is it all hot? Like we, because here in Delhi, we are all suffering, huh? It's so hot, I can't tell you. So I hope some of you are getting some rain. Anybody getting rain? Okay, Bharat, very good. You lucky boy there. Anybody else with more? And some of you don't have your videos on, guys. We're not going to eat you up. So please just have your videos on. It's just so much better to be able to see each other. Yeah. Um, if you could please put your videos on. Right. Okay, yes, so super. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. So now, you know, um, what I intend to do today, all of you for a few, but 20, 25 minutes and take you through the process of graphic novel making. And after that, we'll open it out to questions. Okay. So since it's Zoom, I'm sure one of you can moderate like, you know, and uh, we can take the questions, you can put it on chat so that you know, even I can see it and we can take, we can take it from there. Uh, at any point you feel you need to ask me something or stop me, uh, just raise your hands, all right? Um, I'm pretty much able to see most of you on my screen, so uh, it's all good. Now, how many of you actually read graphic novels? Raise your hands, please. Do you know the concept of what I'm talking about? A graphic novel, uh, some of you would probably be more familiar with the idea of manga. So raise your hands if you have ever read a graphic novel, even if it's one. Nobody's ever read a graphic novel before because I don't see any of you raising your hands. Okay, no problem. So I'm going to just take you through. So what I is have. It? You have. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. But a lot of you don't seem to be aware of what a graphic novel is. So, um, and you might just wonder is what is it? How is it different from a comic book? So essentially, of course, it is in the format of a comic book, but imagine an entire like story being written in the comic book format. And I'm not talking about a series. Of course, you can have something of a series, but ideally what happens in a graphic novel is now imagine you're reading one complete book, but it's written in pictures. Okay, so that's what a graphic novel is. So graphic novels can be 100 pages to about 300 pages. Some even go up to 600 pages. I have one here, so I'll just show you like a couple of one. I, so these are ones I have not written. Have you guys see? Are you able to see through? Yeah. So these are essentially what a graphic novel is. And it's not only for young people. Graphic novels are pretty much for everyone. So it can be for every age group. Okay, so the idea that a graphic novel or a comic book is meant only for that. So a lot of the graphic novels made in this world are actually written for people for an older audience. Okay, so that's what a graphic novel is now. So my um, job is essentially, you know, when I make a graphic novel, I don't really make it just for any particular age group. Of course, if I'm writing it for people your age group, I do have certain things I keep in mind, okay, uh, which I may include or I may not include in my story, but I write for all age groups. So let's begin with that. Like, you know, I write for people your age group and I write for people who are older, and most of the books, like, you know, it can be 50 pages to 100 pages to 200 pages. It depends. Okay. So now uh, let me take you through the process of how I work on a graphic novel. Okay. And I, and I wanted to share some slides with you to just sort of make it a little more fun rather than you just listening to me go jabber, 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 and then falling asleep. Okay. So if anybody is feeling sleepy, you can raise your hand there also. Yeah? You don't have to hear me jabber. We're all good with that. Yeah. We can do a little stretch there. Okay, um, one moment, please. I'm just trying to figure out how this uh, screen sharing works on Zoom. So please bear with me. I haven't used Zoom in a long time. You're not going to believe it. Okay.
All right, has that come across on your screen? Right, okay. Now this is basically how a graphic novel begins or rather how I begin thinking about a novel. How many of you write stories? Can I have that? Like people writing stories, poetry. Okay, I see Insha there, who else? Anybody else into writing stories or maybe one day thinking of uh, writing a story? Yeah, just one or two of you. Okay, that works as well. Okay, now, so when I think of a story, the first thing I begin is like, you know, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. Now, what happens is when people start writing a story, they always have the beginning and they know how, how it will end, but nobody has the middle. Nobody has a clue about what's going to happen in the middle, and that's where the story kind of goes flop. But when you write a story, the first important thing is, okay, you've got your beginning, you know where to start, which is where the beginning is always about wondering about what your plot is, okay? Do you have a plot? Who are the characters in the story? And where are these uh, people staying or living, okay? I mean, are they like, you know, suspended in midair? Are they in space? Are they on earth? This is how it functions. So that is the first beginning of a story. Second part is what we come to the middle. Now, what exactly is happening? Why will somebody read a book through? And that's where this part is very important, where you kind of understand how to pan out your plot, which means now what is happening to the characters? Are the characters growing? Are they killing each other off? Are there new characters coming in? And this is the second, the middle part of a story. Am I making sense to all of you right now? Uh, is it like, you know, just nod your heads. I can see all of you, so we're good. Yeah, okay. So what happens then is then you after you have the middle part, the, the ending is often like actually in many ways the toughest part. Now, how do you like, you know, get to a part where you're able to finish off an entire book where the reader is like, wow, that was good. Or wow, I want more. And this is where it's important to have a resolution. You know, when I say resolution, that means like, you know, let's say there's a fight, like, you know, there's, there's the, let's say we start off with an, you know, like a rather stereotypical, you know, kind of a scenario where there's the battle between the good and the bad. Now, how is it resolving itself? That's where the ending comes into place. Okay. And I'm using such an extreme scenario because I think it's easier to tell you like, you know, that's a resolution there. Does the good guy win or is there going to be on a part where the good guy not win so what is the resolution and that is how usually a story is spanned out so for me when I'm working on a story these are the three things I start off with and this doesn't mean I'm writing it all down because I make graphic novels a lot of it is drawn so everything is not written out there everything is not mapped out logically a lot of things may change but if I don't have this basic structure I don't know where I'm going with my story okay second part is Building a character. Now, the biggest challenge is we face in making a graphic novel is, now if I draw, let's say, one character, let's say I'm drawing Isha, okay. Now, can I maintain Isha's character to look the same throughout the 200 pages? Now, imagine drawing 200 pages of the same character, okay? So, it's superbly difficult to maintain the same look, the same thing. So, that's where, like, you know, it's important to establish a character. I'm talking about, let's say, you have one main character, okay? So, First part is then I decide how many characters do I have, which time period are these characters set in, uh, do they live in a modern house, do they live in a hut, you know, these small things like, you know, uh, and then the next uh, uh, part that is important in the story is the story based over many years, like hundred year, hundreds of years, or is it like based over three hours, you know, these are the first premises of how a story is actually made, okay, this is where I begin my story. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, now this is a character setup. This is a very classical character setup. These are not my characters, but I'm using these just to show you how it works. So the first thing with uh, setting up a character is I most people would draw the basic movements of the character. Like I said, if I have to draw one character for 200 pages, I need to have some movements which are kind of stable. Otherwise, you're not going to recognize the character. 
Okay. So what is called body movements, you know, if they're jumping, running, what would be the eye postures? If a head turns, you know, what are the likely postures that I'm going to be using in the entire graphic novel? Then we move on to like, you know, what do you see if there are props or costumes? For instance, over here, this guy is holding a barn stick there. So is he going to be having it throughout the, you know, entire 200 pages? It's something you're going to recognize him with, right? This is how you recognize characters as well. Otherwise, it's very difficult to recognize characters and keep a static movement throughout a graphic novel. So, you know, uh, the main character is often assigned a certain prop or, a, you know, clothes or something like that. So this is a basic character setup. Every graphic novel kind of begins with. So we kind of have, you know, this is like what we call the cheat sheet for ourselves. So if we stray off, we come back to this and say, okay, this is like what we come back to. And we make it, you know, kind of align ourselves to this. Right. Um, mind one second, please. I think the screen has stopped. Okay. My next panel here I wanted to share with you is. So again, with every graphic novel, the next part we have is. Okay, I'm really sorry. I don't know where my screen went. backgrounds okay now backgrounds are really really okay, i'm not able to it's not loading people so just one second sorry i think uh, this is there's some glitch the thing is not loading really okay let's try this okay is this loaded can you all see? Okay. Now we have something called the background. Now this is a page from my graphic novel. Now this setting is pretty much in a school or hostel. So as you see, like the backgrounds, like, you know, it's like a more like a classroom background where you have like, you know, and in this particular comic, I've used a very minimalistic style, which is essentially black and white. So the background is also very important to set a tone of a comic book. Okay. I'm sharing a little more extensive background with you guys. Uh, Okay, now this is a background like this is you'll see gaps here. That's because uh, those are for the talk bubbles and panels, but this is more like you know, in a forest area. So again, like these are certain things that we kind of decide when we are making like our books or when I'm writing my book, what the background is because they have to blend in with your characters and there's, it's a very essential part. A lot of times when people make books, they often just concentrate on the characters and not really the background. So, but in graphic novels, this is a very essential, con, you know, uh, part of making graphic novels where you actually concentrate on the background. Okay. Now, how do I draw? But I'm going to share that with you a little. So I am basically a, a digital artist. This is my workspace, guys. So I don't do anything on paper. I work with a laptop. I have, uh, as you can see, tablets. I have tablets of various sizes. And I usually, you know, use this to kind of uh, do all my work on. So everything is digital for me. I rarely use paper. I'm not one of those artists who use paper. So everything is kind of worked on the laptop okay uh, going on to the next slide so these are my two books uh, one was uh, the first one is like I mean these are the two books that's basically for your age group one is for people around eight to 11 years old the other one is for uh, you know 10 to 14 years these are some uh, you know classic um, what we call storyboard sheets from my books okay here, as you see, as you can see, these are some sketches I did make on paper, but these are just, you know, sometimes when you have an idea running through your mind and you don't have the laptop or something around you to just have an kind of an assessment of how you're going to proceed with the story. So these are some very rough sketches like I often use to kind of uh, work on a page. Okay, this is a completed page. Uh, this is what you would call an inked page. As you can see, it's also like, you know, it's got the shading in. I use a very minimalistic style, which is like, you know, uh, black and white in uh, contrast. And uh, and this has got the talk bubbles in place, uh, the font in place, everything in place. So this is more or less a completed page for you. Uh, now we can't see the page. You cannot see the page, but it's saying it's loaded. 
So one second, I'm just going to uh, share it again. Yeah. Okay. Has this loaded now? Yes. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. This is like a completed page with all the talk bubbles in place. The talk bubbles means the speech bubbles, the coloring in place, because, you know, there are many phases to making a graphic novel. It's not done like right away with the dark shade. So I have a lighter shade first and then the dark shade. So that's this is a completed page. OK. Has this page loaded? I've shared a new page. Has it loaded? OK, excellent. So this page, as you can see, the I have blank talk bubbles. Now, this is, again, a very essential part of graphic novel making, you know. Everything happened together in stages and spaces. So after I have made, like, the pictures, then I draw in, like, the talk bubbles or the speech bubbles, okay, how it's spaced out, how people are going to be speaking and in what order. Also, like, you know, you, you see, I have like these sound effects. These are very important in graphic novel making. It kind of gives you more uh, realism into a scene in the sense like you feel it more. So it's not just uh, talking and speech and a story. You also have sounds to kind of draw you in. So these are all added after. OK, so usually the uh, the texting is done after. Now, you know, about 20 years back, people used to handwrite it. Nobody does that anymore, okay? We all use uh, digital fonts right now, but this was a process, it was called lettering. So a lot of, imagine sitting with a, a pay, uh, you know, uh, calligraphy pen and writing the letters. So a lot of your old Superman books and stuff had people lettering it with their, you know, uh, with a pen. So that has, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. We'll move on to the next slide. Now, this is again a slide with like, you know, the empty chat bubbles. OK, uh, the reason I have this layout for you is you see the panels, the panels are these boxes. OK, yeah. Now, e every page will have its own box. You know, it's uh, not necessary. There'll be a certain format to it, depending on how I want to tell the story. I might have four boxes. I might have two boxes. I might just have three boxes. It can it depends on how I want the story to be told. Now, how exactly do, does paneling work? Paneling works like I think all of you have some uh, thing with the movie making. Right. I think you've all experienced. Yeah. So when you're behind a camera, you're seeing it from a perspective. Right. So the same way when I'm working on a graphic novel, my panels are the camera angles, you know. So it's like each slide for me is the camera angle. So I want so like I need to show this character sitting from the bottom of the stairs. I use that to create an Im impact. I don't have the luxury of moving images. I have the luxury, however, of still images. OK, so for me, so now this is the same character, but talking from different angles you see first from the front and then from the rear okay now if i had everybody at the same character talking only in one angle it's very boring for a person reading it okay that doesn't help also when a person is reading it if i give different angles like you know it's a simple this page is just a simple thing where a child is talking on the phone but i've gone through various postures and angles just so that when a reader is reading it you you understand this movement because when you talk on the phone or you do something there is movement even though you're doing just one action so now those things have to be captured in a graphic novel and it just makes it more richer I mean it doesn't have to be you can have a different style but for me I use it a lot because I find it like it's a better experience for the reader okay now this uh, I hope the screen has loaded now, this is a panel from a different book. Um, this was a, actually a shorter book. And because it was a, it was for a different age group, it had, it had fewer pages. But again, like just to establish, like, you know, the panels may be different. In this one, I just have three panels as opposed to six or seven on the last one. So depending on how I want the experience for the reader to be, I add my panels in. Now, this again is a full panel, complete page, okay? Here, I wanted like, you know, ju uh, not just the characters to be established, but like an essence of, so you see in the second panel, I do have an elaborate background. Now, an elaborate background is not needed all the time, but on certain pages, one needs it so that 
the you know, as a real kind of drawn in completely into that story, into that situation. So these are aspects that are simultaneously made, you know. Uh, so I'm not drawing the characters first and then the background. It's drawn all together. What I do have to keep in mind is like, how do I fit in the talk bubble? That's something I have to keep in mind. The next aspect is, now this is a full panel. Now, we also have something called a full page panel in graphic novels. Now, these are very important part of a graphic novel, full pages, because that's when you have like an impact of a story. In this particular page, like, you know, I needed the entire picture to hold an impact. I didn't want to break it up or anything. So this is an entire panel to fill an entire page. So these are usually done in crucial parts of a story. Where like, you know, after you've gone through like six or seven camera angles, let's say, suddenly you want like the full impact, like one picture right there, either like, you know, to kind of uh, pull you in completely. Another thing is, you know, I do not have the luxury of working in uh, color because color printing is superbly expensive, you know, and graphic novels are already an expensive proposition to publish. So I have to work with black and white. So I do rely a lot on, you know, single page uh, moments also to draw the viewer in because those are high impact pages. Um, then we come to what we have is a reference point for uh, backgrounds or high impact pages. Now, this typical uh, page is like basically depicting a World War II scenario where like the building is blown up and two soldiers actually stumble upon a piano. Now, I had to use references. Now, references are not really uh, always like, you know, like uh, something that you'll draw to the T. It's not going to be like, oh, just because I have this house, it has to be drawn like these. These are just like to create an I ambient drawing exactly how much of the wall do I want broken what are the likelihoods of how, how the ceiling will be you know so those become like basic reference points I will not necessarily copy it exactly the way it is so these are like you know some very uh important aspects like at least the basic aspects for where I make a start making a graphic novel till it's made now, I'll just stop sharing the screen and I'll just share with you the next aspect. Now, what do you think happens after a graphic novel is written? Anybody wanting to get in, jump into that? Raise your hands if anybody wants to speak about that. What do you think happens after I make a graphic novel? Where do you think it goes? Do you think it goes anywhere or it doesn't go anywhere? It lies in my bin. What do you think happens? A printing. Yes, but why do you think anybody will print it? For publishing. Yes, for publishing. Okay, so now the next step is obviously getting into the aspect of publishing. Now, uh, there are many aspects to publishing. I'm going to share my part with you. So um, for me, I, uh, my, uh, my contracts are with mainstream publishing houses, okay? Now, there are many kinds of publishing houses. You have the mainstream publishing houses, especially for my, uh, or the traditional, uh, traditional publishing houses, as we call them. Uh, for my um, young adult novels, I have a traditional publishing house, okay? Who will like, you know, who usually like, I send the uh, manuscript to, and if they like it, they pick it up, right? Now, Next, then comes in the real challenging work because graphic novels, you know, you cannot just edit it. Like, you know, you can't just say now, you know, uh, I don't like this part. Now I just need to change the sentence. Now imagine if I have to change a part of a story. It's like I literally need to redraw everything. At least three of this. Okay. Now, if I redraw those three, four pages, it's going to impact another one page for sure and the way the talk bubbles are made, okay? Now, just to share with you each page, how long do you think it takes me to make each page? Any guesses there? Anybody like wanting to guess how long? 15 minutes, okay, anybody else? Two to three hours. Two to three hours, anybody else? I guess it depends on the detail you put into each uh, scene. But I would say like around one hour to two hours. Right. Okay, right. You're absolutely right. It depends on the detailing. But on an average, each page would roughly take me like, you know, to get to, uh, you know, something which is like in a publishing content. It takes me anywhere between four to five hours to finish a page. Okay. So now imagine multiply that, guys. If I'm writing a 150-page uh, book, 
uh, multiplied by an average of five hours. How do you think it, how long does it take? Right now, imagine if the publisher tells me now, Nandita, you have to change 10 pages. What do you think I should be doing? Banging my head on the wall? Yeah, so that's exactly what ends up ha happening. I bang my head on the wall, but yeah, there's sometimes changes are needed. So then comes in like what I was talking about in the publishing process where you have to go through drafts. So there's always a first draft. The first draft is proofreading. All of you understand what proofreading is? Proofreading is like, okay, so when you're writing a book or something, you know, you will make errors, like you'll mix, miss out on the comma, you'll miss out on a full stop, you will have, uh, you know, spelling mistakes and things like that. Okay, so what happens is then somebody goes through. So if you're writing a book, if you go and read the same book, you will never spot your own errors. You know that, right? You will never spot your own errors. So somebody else has to do it. Okay, so that person and go your entire and they say okay this is where you know you've missed out it was wrong spelling wrong punctuation wrong grammar so they fix it for you and then you have to you know recreate that part again that's the first part that's proofreading that's the basic part there's a second proofreading and that happens because the person who has proofread it may have missed out on errors okay so they go back they will read it again to have a completely like you know a flawless kind of a book there so at least two minimum proofreadings are done guys but because I also deal with illustrations, there might be like, you know, pages where illustrations need to be changed. Maybe the illustration is not looking good enough and then I have to change it, redraw, rework it. Okay, that's the third process. Okay, now all this takes roughly about three months, three to four months after the book has been made. Okay, so I'm talking now about if it's going to be published about three to four months where just like, you know, things are being fine cut, like, you know, chiseled away right then comes okay then uh, i get a mail uh, from my uh, editor they say okay i think we are good to go now you need to draw the cover okay uh, if you're writing a book which is like just words somebody else draws the cover for you for graphic novels the graphic novelist usually draws the cover okay so the cover is then something once it's an idea it's on to get a cover for the book that after the cover is made then it depends on like you know how the publishing house has it again it takes about two to three months to actually have the printed book in your hand okay so roughly if you ask me a book after it's written to when it's published is a good one year process on a minimum side sometimes it gets delayed as well and then you you know you finally get it to like a bookstore and then you have it there Okay, so this is essentially like, you know, what I took you through is like the basics of how I make a book. There are many other subtle nuances to it, which if I get now, it's not going to make a lot of sense. Also, it may not make a lot of sense, you know, when you're speaking on Zoom. So what I wanted to take you all through is like, you know, how the hand process starts and how it's finally created out there. This is exactly how it is made. Right now, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? And then let's have a nice conversation, people. Do you think you guys will read a graphic novel after this? Question one. I'm not asking you to read one. I'm asking you to read any. They're wonderful books. You know, you really, really must, uh, you know, pick up a few and uh, let me know how you like them. Like, you know, you must uh, pick up graphic novels. They're, so, they're really beautiful. And they're like, imagine like you're not just being drawn into a story through words, but through pictures. OK, uh, it's, it's just an amazing experience. And if some of you are, how many of you are averse to reading books? Raise your hands. OK, that's cool. There's nothing wrong. OK, that two, uh, I see anyone. OK, quite a few. OK, I think graphic novels, therefore, are the best things for you guys. You know why? Because you're not going to be lost only in words. And because there is that interpretation from the picture point of view, you actually finish it very quickly. Now, imagine reading graphic novels even on the uh, World War. Imagine reading a, a graphic novel on the Holocaust. You will be going through such deep, intense stuff, but without realizing you've gone through 300 pages. That's the amazing thing. You won't be able to put down a graphic novel. So you guys must try it, all of you who don't like to read maybe a lot of words. Please give graphic novels a try. I could give you a few recommendations also if you would like that, to read graphic novels. Yeah. So any questions uh, while I've been talking? What do you think? What do you feel about the, uh, the process of writing? And somebody who has been writing, what are the challenges you have faced so that we can talk about it? 
Do we have any questions? I do see something on the chat there. No questions at all? Um, uh, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, please. Oftentimes, like, if I ever try to write, like, a story, I find that I can never get started. Is there, like, anything I could try to, like, get a creative idea? Yeah, there are actually many. The first thing to begin with is, you know, a story doesn't usually happen, you know, uh, in 15 minutes normally. You know, story is actually something that builds up. You don't realize it's building up, Okay. But so let's say you start with one base, you have like one basic idea that comes up, right? The first thing to do is you jot down somebody, okay? And since if you're, you're into just, if you're into writing, it's very important to have 15 minutes. And since you guys are all going to school, you won't have so much time, but 15 minutes over the week where you're just sitting and trying to write something, it doesn't may, matter if it's uh, making sense or not. So you might think I'm writing gibberish, but you should end up writing. So let's say you have like, you have an idea of a story or you hide, have an idea of just a character. Okay, you have a character who's a dog who can speak. Let's begin with that. Imagine the dog is interacting somewhere and can you write five dialogues around that? That's already your first start into a story. So this is the first basic exercise one has to do. You sit down and if you have one idea, you start writing. Let's say if you have just an idea of like, okay, I want to write something about space. Write 10 lines, try and write 10 lines gibberish. I have a spaceship, my spaceship is called what? Who are who, who, who is on that spaceship? You know, so those are the first basic things you start with. And as you keep writing every week, you will see you're actually building up on a plot. Make sense. What software do I use? Right. So uh, I usually do a lot of work on Photoshop. And if I'm writing on a tablet, or drawing on a tablet, my, but my tablet is really not for the complete thing because for publishing, you need very high level resolution. So on a tablet, I use Ebus Paint. But uh, on, uh, you know, on the computer, on the laptop, I work with Photoshop. How many of you will actually end up reading a graphic novel now? At least some interest peaked there with might read. Okay, two, I see. Okay, three, four. Okay, excellent. Like, is that an honest answer? Or you're just being nice to me. That's an honest answer. Okay, super. So you, you do know, like, you know, if you guys read a graphic novel, you can actually, like, you know, uh, uh, send me an email. You can ask ma'am, she has my email ID. Feel happy to drop me an email. I do get a lot of people writing to me, people your kids your age. So let me know what you liked about the graphic novel or not. What are my recommendations? Okay, there are actually many apart from the two books I have for you guys, which are my own two books. One is Rain Must Fall and the other is called The Piano. I have another book that's coming out um, that should be out very soon. And uh, I don't know how much, how many of you are interested in something like death, but it's made for people your age group. It's called Starry Starry Night. It's not out there as yet, but that will be out. Some other great stuff for people your age. Um, how old are you all? 15, 14? Roughly around 14, 15 years old. Okay, all of you around that age group. Okay, some uh, really good stuff for you would um there is one second i can actually it's called on a sunbeam guys there is this book can you see it you see how thick that book is so when i talk, talk, tell you about graphene and i will just unblur my thing because i think it's kind of you see now so you see how thick that book is yeah now, you, I, I, you see, right? So you guys will actually, like people who don't like reading, this is, I'll tell you how many pages give. Um, this is about 500 pages. You'll finish it in two days. You won't be able to keep it down. So On a Sunbeam is a really good one. Uh, by the same author, you have something called Spinning. Okay. Um, there is another book 
called, um, I think it's called The Boy. It's basically about an immigrant boy who's trying to settle in. These are what I'm talking about are all um, graphic novels for kids your age, kiddo. So I'll share, I'll just give you the right name for that. So like I was telling you, there are actually, um, you know, very intense topics graphic novels talk about. So it's not like just like, you know, uh, flimsy stuff. Uh, there is one book called This One Summer. You guys will like that as well. Um, there is another one called um, Anya's Ghost. And uh, there's one more you might like, which I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called The Magic Fish. Then there are several others, uh, you know, uh, which are like um, in series, but these are the ones like which are actually kind of one single book. Just to warn you, graphic novels are a little bit expensive, so you want to save up a little before you buy them. But once you buy one, you will never throw them. I can tell you that. They're books that you'll be carrying forever. You know, you'll be throwing all your other books, but not your graphic novels. So those are some graphic novels you can start with. Yeah, there's somebody giving recommendation, The Lost Boy. I haven't read that, but yeah. So then, of course, you know, you have like the manga series, guys. But, you know, those are more or less in uh, like those are series and they're uh, they usually tackle like, you know, more like an adventure genre. How many books did you did I read to give one name? I didn't get that. Um, like, how do I name my uh, books? I'm not quite uh, sure what you mean by that. Can you just clarify? What do you mean? How many books did uh, you read? Yeah. Give one of the names that how many books did you read and give one of the name of that book. I have read all the books I just told you. Like all? All of them. So that's what I'm telling you. The good books. So it, I think that the list I gave you, I think four, five, six books to begin with. After that, you will start finding out what books you actually like and, you know, you'll enjoy what kind of books to read. So there's another book, which is actually, it's little for people who are about, you know, above 16, 17 years old, but I still think you might enjoy it. It's about the Holocaust. It's called Mouse, M-A-U-S. It's an award-winning book. It's called Mouse. I want to read it again about 500 pages, I think. I don't have it with me here, but yeah. And you'll be surprised. You'll go through like an entire book and you won't know you've read it. So everybody who's averse to reading, go read a graphic novel. I can see some of you grinning. Yeah. Any other questions? Come on. No questions. Have you all fallen asleep? How many of you want to make a graphic novel after this? I think might want to. How many of you? Okay, there are three, all right, over there. Now, you don't have to draw to make a graphic novel. You do know a lot of people, you know. So, in with graphic novels, you have an illustrator sometimes. I do everything myself, but there are teams. You have an illustrator and a, and a writer. So, you can actually, if you have a good uh, if a friend who is a good artist, you might want to form a team and try making a little short story or something one page story so yeah you don't have to think of like oh can i draw what i can't draw right That's awfully quiet long day sleepy day yeah Surely, Master, you can ask me any question you know it doesn't have to be about graphic novels anything you would like to ask me uh, there answer. was a question, I think, that why did you take up graphic? Uh, a graphic novel as a joke. Okay, yeah. 
Right. Okay. That's a good one and a rather interesting one. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, I never thought I would make a graphic novel like most of you. I would also say I I started off just writing prose. So I never thought of making graphic novels. Of course, I used to read a lot of comic books as a kid, but I never realized it could be like a complete, like it's a complete genre and you can actually write a book uh, drawing pictures. Okay. So, um, but I got introduced to now, you know, I had a friend who comes from a small place in Belgium and in Belgium and France graphic novels are really big like if you have a chance to visit you'll go to a, a village there and you know the entire you're not going to believe me the entire village is just full of books and graphic novels like you just walk in and imagine an entire room with books still there and beautifully drawn ones okay uh, and most of the books were of course like you know uh, in Dutch and fr uh, in French but I used to love the entire format. And uh, so when she used to carry these books back for me, um, I used to bribe her. to so tell her, look, I'm going to buy you chocolate, pizza, whatever you want. Uh, but you have to sit and read out the books for me every day. Two hours, I need you to sit out, uh, sit with me, read the books. You don't need to read to a child, but I, I don't know the language. I can only understand the pictures, but, you know, I'm going to pay you whatever. So I used to, you know, buy her chocolates and whatever. Like, you know, today I'm going to buy you two extra cups of coffee. And but at two hours, you need to read out the books for me. So that's how I started learning about graphic novels. And I studied it that way. And then I decided that this is the only way I'm going to write. So that's how my journey began. How many of you want to be writers when you grow up? Little aspiration that I want to write a story, make a movie. How many of you? Actually, they all have, some of them have, you know, made films for our right. festival. Uh -huh. Okay. So some then, of them, yes. Bharat, all, yeah. seeing when you after I... long. So don't you have any questions for ma'am? No, ma'am. No? Okay. When did I write my first graphic novel? Um, actually, uh, that's been a long time, kiddo. You know, so the first books were all, well, not for people your age, but let me just say the ones that are actually like for your age. So I had a series that ran in a Tamil newspaper, which was for your age group. So it was like a weekly series. That was uh, roughly around 2008. That was the first time I started writing for people your age. But like in a concise graphic novel format, I actually wrote the first one in 2017, 2018. Nandita, how many till date have you? So, how many? So, yeah, for like kids, um, I would say like, you know, about four, uh, but for like the older people. So, like, they're in different anthologies anywhere between seven to eight. I have another one for old, like uh, the adults coming out end of the year, which I mean, it's not for these kids at all. So, that's end of the year. So, roughly around that space. Yes. Any more questions? Please ask. Feel so free to was... ask. I'm happy to ask and answer your questions. Anything yes. you would like to ask on the creative we journey? We still have little time left. So it doesn't have to be directly related to graphic novels. If you're facing anything with your own creative yes. journey or, you know, sometimes uh, I, I mean, maybe I can you know, share Please, something. Ma'am can help you. Why did I think to, of writing a graphic novel? Yeah. Well, you know, I actually kind of love the format. Like, you know, like if you like, I, I mean, I would love to guys reading a graphic novel. But if you read one, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Like, imagine like it's not just words and the words are very minimal, right? You're not uh, an entire graphic novel will probably have how many words? A yeah, thousand words, maximum 2000 on a higher limit, which is nothing. But Imagine those words are completely like, you know, it's almost like they're dancing with, you know, the pictures to get you into a space which just pulls you into another dimension. And I find it absolutely enthralling, you know, to be able to use both elements. So like I said, if you read this book, Mouse, I'm picking up uh, that as an example, because it's a very intense book. Now imagine writing about the Holocaust, guys. Okay, this is where like, you know, uh, the Jews are being mass massacred every day. Now imagine putting that first impression is, oh, you're going to make this in comic form. 
you might think it's funny it isn't you read it 20 pages down you're going to put the book down it's so intense and you're going to think and if you look at the pictures also you know the style is not like you know somebody's michelangelo drawing it it has a style which is very specific to the author uh, so why is it called mouse okay mouse uh, m a u s is basically the german word for mouse as we call it okay so here the author has basically picked he was a jew uh, he has pictured himself as uh, a mouse and the cat, they essentially, they are the Germans or the SS army. I don't want to call every German an SS, but, you know, the SS army at that point under Hitler. So imagine an entire book. So every time a soldier comes in, he's a mouse, uh, he's a cat and the mouse is being preyed on. But it's so beautifully written. And there's just like, you know, imagine this person is losing everything in his country. He's losing, uh, you know, he, he probably doesn't even know if he's going to be alive tomorrow. And this has been put in what you call a comic book format. Now, that's what I'm saying. You think comic books is like, you know, everybody's about to laugh. Absolutely not. Even like in this book, you know, it's a, it's a love story, guys. This is a love story for young actors, really. Okay. It's a school romance. It's uh, beautifully drawn. I mean, in three colors actually, and it's 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 like kind of you know in a different setting, outer space. Imagine like you know there is no world and these people are on a planet, so there's a different dimension completely. So they're not even talking about planet. It's like you know there is no Earth technically anymore. Okay, but there's a high school somewhere, right? So uh, how old am I? <laughs> okay, guess guys, how old? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Everyone is saying 28. One person is saying 28. Only if you guess correctly, I'll say yes. Otherwise, it's a no. No. Three chances only you get. Okay, no to everything. Your chances run out. Now you'll never know. Any other question? I will never know. I'll just keep teasing you guys. I'm sure I'll again meet you at some point and then we can have this fun conversation. Do you have like a literature degree or like a writing degree? I do not have a writing degree. I have a degree in music. I did study English honors in college, but I don't think you need to have a writing degree. I am not even trained as an artist. So I didn't go to art college either. So anybody thinks that's the only way to do something in life, you're wrong. But it's important to, you know, kind of understand, like, you know, uh, you ask me an interesting question, like, how do I kind of write? Most times what happens is like people your age or anybody, actually, you have a passion for something. And let's not say even if it's not a passion, but you have an interest in something. What ends up you have patience to follow it. I'm using the word patience, guys, okay? Because these things need a lot of patience. Now, do you know how many pages I have lying which will never be published? Hundreds and hundreds. I imagine if I start off with, okay, nobody is going to publish me. Will I ever write anything? I won't write. So it's all about patience. And it's all about knowing that, okay, everything will not have to, do I get angry? Okay, I'll answer that question in a bit. That's a fun question. Nobody's asked me that before. But yeah, so just to, you know, so if you really want to like follow something, you don't need a degree. You need to know that you want to do it. As cliched as it may sound, guys. And you'd kind of decide like, I want to do it. So I want to do it. I'll share a very quick, interesting story with all of you. Is it cool if I do that? Before I answer that other question. Okay. Have you all seen Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry, the cartoon? The cat and the mouse. Yeah, I can see Bharat saying yes. I, so, uh, guys, this is like um, uh, one of those cartoon characters. Like, it's like Mickey Mouse. Like, you cannot not know it. Like, it's one of those epic characters that have been created. Okay? So, there's a character called Tom and Jerry. And uh, it's made by MGM Studios. Okay? Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Okay? They still make huge movies. It's a huge Hollywood studio. So now, uh, many years ago, I was into uh, something, I was into animation, okay? I used to work on little bits of animation. And um, the person, the creators of Tom and Jerry, so when a series like Tom and Jerry is made, there are many creators, but you have like the first level creators who will think of the character. So this gentleman, his name was Jan, 
He was a Czechoslovakian guy. He's he he's not alive anymore. He passed away a few years ago. He's won the Oscar like I don't know how many times. Okay, so I happened to find. And his address, very young then. So imagine, like the guards, I just sent him an email saying, you know, sir, I want you to redo my animation. Can you imagine? <laughs> Why would he even like want to do that? But I did. So you're not going to believe it. Like this was an experimental animation clip. I sent it for that. Um, two days later, I do receive a kind of a response, and he told me what was wrong or what he liked about the animation, but that was not the part that actually caught my attention. What I really liked and what was has been a very motivating thing for me, and I share it with the story with people your age is because I feel it has inspired me. And I think if you all have something you like to follow, do keep this in mind. His last line in that email was, he said, you know, dear Nandita, do, it doesn't matter you know, how many flaws are there in the animation or, you know, how many times people tell you you're wrong. If you have a story to tell, I'm going to always ask you to stick to it and tell it. And I, that those words have never left my mind. So criticism doesn't bother me. It's all right. My own failures and, you know, the struggles I have don't bother me. And which is I'm sharing it with you. If you guys have a thing you like to follow, please, you must follow it. Okay, uh, quickly to answer that question, do I get angry? Okay, all the time, kiddo, all the time, you have no idea. I have things that I sit and break if I can't manage it. Like I throw things at the wall. I have broken glasses, mugs. Uh, don't even ask. Don't even ask. <laughs> It's probably not the best example, but yeah, don't even ask. Like, there's so many things I end up breaking. Yeah. But ideally, that's not the way to go about it, okay? Don't break things. Because you have to clean up also after, right? So can you imagine if I break a mug, then if it's even worse, I have to now go clean it up. So ideally, don't break it. Have any question? No. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Are we, are we good? What are you all going to do now? Don't tell me you'll sit and study. That's absolute nonsense. What are you all going to do now? Ping, ping, ping on chat. Let me see what you, honestly, all these young people are going to do right now. I want to know. Don't tell me homework, please. How can you start making a graphic novel? Okay. Right. Like I was telling you, the first thing you need to know is, uh, can you draw? So, Chinmay, can you draw a little? Okay. Now, see, the thing is, if you want to make a graphic novel and you want to do the drawing all by yourself, the first step would be to kind of work on your drawing skills. Okay. Now, that could be anything. You could start with basic character sketches. Okay. Or you could start with trying to make a background. But that's where you begin. Now, in case you do not want to like kind of like make your own drawings, in that case, you need to know how to write a story and then look for a friend who can be an illustrator. That's the first way to go about it. But since you can draw a little, I presume you can, you can work on that skill set first. Uh, online PDF, kiddo, you're not going to find it. Graphic novels are intentionally not put online because A, the re you have even... If you kindle it, uh, because the reading, you know, I mean, imagine trying to go through pictures like that. So it's a different experience. I doubt you'll find proper PDFs online. You might find it on Kindle as a Kindle book because it, it has to be typeset in a certain manner so you can flick and read it. So even if you're if you feel like it's too expensive to get the you know uh, the printed like the version, you might want to get it on Kindle. If you have a Kindle subscription, which is 300 rupees the entire year, I hope you guys know you can read any book. It's just 300 bucks for the year. So that could be an option. Any other PDF option, I do not think you'll get like that. You won't be able to read it properly. There's, the experience will not happen.
So nobody actually wrote about what they're going to be doing. It's a big secret. Nobody wants to say anything. Some of your friends have gone to sleep, I'm very sure. Some of them are there. Some of them have gone to sleep. The rest, I can see Bharat, what are you going to be doing after? Achha, watch TV. Uh, that's no, that's insane. I'm watching TV. Bharat, what will you be doing? Ma'am, you made me remember Tom and Jerry. I'll go oh, and watch. You'll go watch Tom and Jerry. I think that is an excellent thing to do. Okay. Okay. What, what will you watch on your phone, Yaar Himan? Come on. So a lot of you know, like you play games on your phones, a lot of them, are, the storyboard is derived from graphic novels. Are you aware of that? If, yeah, especially if there are like, you know, like Japanese characters and all, they're usually derived from graphic novels, you know? So the storyboards work from there. Okay, Bharat is not going to play a video game. Shruti is very quiet. Shruti, what are you going to be doing after, kiddo? I have no idea. No idea, but it is a Saturday, something to do. Don't don't tell me you're going to study. Please don't do that. Must not study so much. Yeah. Shruti is going to study, guys. I can see it on her face. Aryansh, what are you going to be doing? What about you, Navya? What will you be doing? Come on. I guess I'll search up the books that you've told. Like, I'll like, try to okay. read about it. Okay, okay. I'll... And yes, yeah, you should share your coffee with us also. How could you just drink coffee alone? What nonsense is this? I, next time I'm meeting you all, you guys all in person. I don't want this online thing. And please remember, Aryan, she's getting us coffee. Everyone make a note of that. He's grinning. But that's happening. I want to remember, you have no idea. I remember these funny things. So meet you next. I'll go, where's my coffee? Okay, that's happening. Okay, who else is there? Rajat, what about you? What are you up to? What will you be doing? Um, I'm just going for a shopping now. Okay, shopping. Very interesting. So we, let us not hold you back too much. Okay, what are you going shopping for? Please, I just need to know to annoy you. Um, because I need a new t-shirt. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. What about you, Asia? I'll go play football. Like online football or like real football? Sorry? Football, like. I'll go down. Oh, you, cool. Isha, you tell tell her about yourself. You have an achievement. You must tell, must share. Uh, I'm a national level football player. Like school. How, how cool is that? And it's so refreshing to meet a little girl. Sorry, I'm calling you little because you guys are all like my kids only. But, uh, you know, playing football, that is a tremendous. Keep up with it. That's pretty awesome. What about you, Ria? Uh, Ria has uh, decided. She's sleeping. We don't know. Ria, what are you going to be doing? I'll probably go out. It's a Saturday. I need to enjoy my weekend. Ah, okay. And what does enjoying mean? Probably go out with my friends or my family, yeah. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, did I speak to you, Heyman? What are you going to be doing? Ma'am, I'll be watching Insta. You'll be watching what? Insta. I, I can't hear you. It's breaking off the sound. Instagram. Ah, uh, Instagram. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Scrolling basically. Spurti, what about you, kiddo? Ma'am, I would just probably get some sleep. Oh, nice. Okay, all right. Okay. What about you, Chinmay? Ma'am, literally just sleep. Okay, literally just sleep. So, are you guys all night birds? Like, you know, you sleep now and you wake up at night? Ma'am, honestly, no. No, okay. Our school just had a marathon in the morning. So we are all pretty Ooh, tired. Oh, okay. And then you had to sit through ma'am talking. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. No, ma'am. We went to school and came. <laughs> oh, that okay. Yeah. But still, it's tiring. What about you, Swastik?
Do we have Swastik here? How about you, Sharika? Ma'am, I lie to sleep or watch some TV. Oh, four people sleeping. Okay, what about you, Baj? Bala, can you hear me? What about you? He's already sleeping. Yeah. He entered late. Ah, <laughs> that's okay. Yes. But I think, um, you know, um, what we can, what I can say is like, you know, uh, if you ever feel like you need to ask me more questions or something, you know, ma'am does have your, my email ID, you can like, you know, drop me a mail, message, yes, sure. you know, feel free to drop me a message whenever. And I do hope like whatever you guys are into, keep doing it. It doesn't have to be graphic novels and stuff, but I do hope it sort of some interest in graphic novels and you get to read at least one and maybe enjoy that world as well. I hope you certainly do that. And, uh, like I know they're kind of expensive to buy. So maybe like on Kindle is probably the easier bit. Definitely, ma'am. You like uh, built a spark instead of all of us. I'm glad you enjoyed something. So are we winding up now? Uh, so we are done, Nandita? Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. unless they want to still, uh, they have any yeah. other questions, I otherwise think I think, think so. yeah, yeah, I we'll don't good. think so they have any more. Yeah. They can surely ask you more questions. Mm -hmm. They can uh, write to us and I'll definitely pass it on. Sure, that sounds good. Yes. Okay. Yes, Isha, if you would like to say something. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for this amazing workshop. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, and thank you, everyone else, for joining us. Well, thank you all. And uh, good and, uh, you know, uh, best wishes to all of you, okay? All right.